Hello, I'm Tana, your MLC tutor. Today I'm going to do a video for viewer LEB1004. She asked me to talk a little bit about um, curtate future expected lifetime when future let me uh, when the future lifetime random variable is exponentially distributed. So let's do an example. Let's say that our future lifetime random variable, our t of x, is exponentially distributed with a mean of 25. And we're going to try to find the curtate expected future lifetime for this life age x. So first, let's think about what this means that the future lifetime is exponentially distributed. So the exponential distribution is memoryless. So if our future lifetime is exponentially distributed, the mean future lifetime is always going to be 25, no matter what age x you're looking at. So if our life age x, um, if we're looking at our life age x 10 years from now, we expect him to live 25 more years. If we're looking at our life age x 25 years from now, we still expect him to live 25 more years. So not very realistic, but it is pretty nice for calculating things. So we know that we always expect our life age x to live 25 years. That really means that our continuous um, expected future lifetime on x is 25. Okay, this also means if you always expect him to live the same number of years, no matter where you're at, that means that your force of mortality is always the same. So the rate of failure, or here the rate at which you die, it's always the same. Um, that goes along with always expecting to live the same number of years. So, in other words, we have a constant mu, or a constant force of mortality, okay? And we know that if we have a constant mu, our expected future lifetime, our continuous expected future lifetime for x equals 1 over mu. Okay, so we know that mu here is 0 0.04. And I think that that's probably the hardest part, is just figuring out what this means in terms of your problem. So, I did one video on curtate expected future lifetime before, and I think that I used... Um, this formula where you have the sum of k times the k year deferred probability of death. And so this initially made the most sense to me, but I'll show you another formula that's easier to work with when you're doing calculations. So we're looking at the expected future lifetime. It's really just the same kind of a process um, as trying to find the expected value of any random variable. You look at all the different possibilities um, for the values that your random variable can take on, which here is t of x, and you look at the corresponding probabilities. So our life age x could live one year. The probability of that is the probability of only living one year is that you live one year and then die the next. You could live two years. The probability of that is that you live two years and die the next, and so on. So we're just, um, and you take the expected value by summing up the product of all the possible values that your future lifetime could take on and their corresponding probabilities. That's what we're doing right here. These are our k's, okay, and these are our k bar qx. Um, so this works. Let's instead use, because it's, I mean, it's easier to remember, and it also makes intuitive sense. You can also sum up, 
Oops. We're using K's here because K typically is used with curtailed probabilities and calculations. So we can also just sum up KPX. And that makes sense. It's sort of like what we were doing before. And that's like saying if you live one year, 1px one or px, you get one year of future lifetime. Now, if you live two years, 2px, then you add on an extra year to that. Um, so we're doing like px plus 2px, kind of like times one. Here's one year, and then if you live, if you continue to live, you add on an extra year. If you continue to live, you add on an extra year, and so on. So that makes sense to you. Let's use that one. So we are going to be looking at, I guess it's exactly what I just wrote down, um, px plus. 2px plus 3px all the way up to I suppose infinity px. Um, we know that if you have a constant force of mortality, um, tpx or here, well here, kpx. If you have a constant force of mortality, your prob your survival probability is e to the negative force of mortality times however many years you're looking at surviving. So you can recognize that in each of these terms, we're multiplying by an additional e to the negative 0.04. I think this is the same thing as e to the negative 0.04 plus e to the negative 0.04, e to the negative 0.04. Right, these are the same. These are the same. So in each term, you're multiplying by an extra e to the negative 0 0.04. So to sum this up, I'm most comfortable using um, my little a times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. So this is the first, this is going to equal the first term times 1 minus your ratio to the number of terms over 1 minus the ratio. So here, the first term is e to the negative 0 0.04. Our ratio is also e to the negative 0 0.04. It's whatever we're multiplying by each term. So e to the negative 0 0.04, n is infinity. K, of course, e to the negative infinity goes to 0, and we end up with e to the negative 0 0.04 over 1 minus e to the negative 0 0.04. And I got, again, this is e sub x for our curtate expected future lifetime for our linkage x. I got 24.503. Okay, so there are a couple of neat things to sort of think about here and make sure you understand. Even though this is the curtate expected future lifetime for x, um, which indicates that we're looking at complete years, um, this does not have to be a whole number. This doesn't have to be like 24 or 25. And think about that. The reason for that is that we're looking at an average number of complete years. So once you look at all these different possible complete years, and you take the expected value, or you average those out, you take into account the probabilities, of course it's not going to be a whole number. So that's fine. Maybe that's really, really obvious. But that occurred to me for a second, because it's curtailed. Anyway, 
the other thing that is probably way more useful to recognize is that um, our curtate expected future lifetime should be a little bit less than our continuous expected future lifetime, which we said was 25, right? Because, uh, let's see this. If this is your future lifetime, say it's like 9.42, this is really what your future lifetime is, say t of x, the number of whole years that you live, the number of completed years that you live is going to be less than that. So we're looking, when we're looking at the curtate expected future lifetime, we're ignoring this whole fraction right here, so it's going to end up being a little bit less. Um, I hope that is helpful. I hope that answers your question. If it doesn't, please let me know, and I will try again. Happy studying.